most of my books have come out of my teaching, like communities and fiction. That was from graduate seminars at Irvine over the last years. One of my tasks at, at uh, Hopkins was to teach uh, undergraduate and graduate courses. And my main task, I was the Victorianist. So I had to teach Victorian novel. And Georges Poulet had become a great friend and colleague of mine. We used to have coffee every morning in the, the coffee place at, at uh, uh, Hopkins and talk about this and that. But uh, I was teaching because I thought I ought to include Trollope uh, in my list along with George Eliot and Dickens and so on. Uh, uh, and I chose somewhat arbitrarily because I was totally ignorant, uh, Barchester Towers. So I was teaching Barchester Towers, I think in an undergraduate, small undergraduate course because the number of English majors was not large. At, uh, and I complained to uh, Poulet and said, George, I'm teaching Trollope's Barchester Towers and I, I don't know what to, I don't have anything to say about it. Uh, I'm having great difficulty filling up the uh, several hours that I'd allotted to this uh, novel. And Poulet said, oh, Trollope. And it at that point turned out that Poulet was a, a great reader of Trollope, that he had read all of Trollope's novels. He, remember, he taught at the University of Edinburgh. He'd read them all from one end to the other. and. Uh, essentially knew them by heart. The main thing I remember, but it's important still for me, was his notion that Trollope's novels express the, he didn't use the terminology of the narrator, express uh, what he called a collective consciousness of a community. Uh, a, a fascinating idea and one that I would now be a, a little dubious about, though it does describe some, something, I think, uh, uh, for him. And the narrator, according to him, of Trollope's novel speaks for that collective consciousness. So the consciousness of all the characters, remember consciousness is the big term for Poulet. Uh, he's, he's a critic of consciousness. Uh, 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 all of the characters' minds are embedded in that collective consciousness. And it's that that justifies, according to, or explains, according to uh, Poulet, the, the, another key term in his reading of Trollope, the transparency of the characters to one another, uh, a kind of intuitive uh, understanding of what the other person is saying. Uh, I would uh, qualify that by saying, that these late novels, uh, especially ones I've been reading, the characters do not know what the other person, that's a very, it's there to some degree, and you get notations that say he knew exactly what she was thinking um, from various clues and so on, but I think that idea of transparency was in Poulet's case exaggerated. But it made me realize that there was really something to do with <laughs> with uh, teaching and understanding uh, Trollope. So it was a decisive moment in my understanding to me that two of the greatest teachers that I've had, neither of whom was a Trollope specialist, Bongiorno and Poulet as a colleague teacher, were great Trollope uh, fanatics, I would have to say. I mean, imagine that. somebody who read through all of Trollope's novel, and ever since then I've been trying to understand Trollope and reading more of his novels and writing about him now and then. But for Apule, he said something interesting. He said, I know, I've read all of those Trollope's novels. Trollope is very important for me, but I've never had the idea of writing about him. <laughs>